This is up. I'm David Gura. And four days after Robert Mueller testified on Capitol Hill, a few more Democrats have said they support impeachment, but there has hardly been a groundswell. By our count, there are 97 House Democrats in favor of starting those proceedings. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has to guide her caucus through this debate, and the Wall Street Journal's editorial board says the special counsel's hearing was to her benefit. Quote, the only person in Washington happier than Donald Trump about Robert Mueller's Wednesday appearance before Congress is Nancy Pelosi. The House Speaker's impeachment caucus had hoped the hearing would mobilize new public support despite her opposition, but it was more likely their last gasp. The Journal's conservative editorial board borrowing a phrase from the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee there. It is no secret the Speaker is reluctant to move to impeachment, and that has led to suggestions she is trying to run out the clock. I'm not trying to run out the clock. Let's get sophisticated about this, okay? The decision will be made in a timely fashion. This is an endless and when we have a, a, the best, strongest possible case. Well, the man from Memphis joins us now, Congressman Steve Cohen. He represents Tennessee's 9th Congressional District. He sits on the House Judiciary Committee, and he is someone who has called for impeachment, called for it very early on, I think back in 2017, uh, your Absolutely. initial articles that you put forward. You famously brought that bucket of chicken <laughs> to, to Bill Barr's hearing, and I wonder if you ever feel the compulsion to do that when the Democratic caucus meets. As these conversations continue about impeachment, how are you feeling about their willingness to seriously engage with that issue, to get sophisticated, as Nancy Pelosi said? Duck would be more appropriate. Okay. <laughs> I don't think there are any chickens. I think sometimes they duck. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, we're, we're moving along. I thought having seven new people come forward. I was looking at that picture up there mm -hmm. of all the folks. When I put my resolution in, in November of 2017, I tried to get as many co-sponsors as possible, and that was a total of 17. So to see 100 is a big leap. And it's more and more people are being uh, seeing it and being willing to come out and say it. This is a lawless president who should be impeached, and that's our job under the Constitution. If we see violations, uh, it's a political decision, but we ought to be making a decision in the best interest of democracy, and that's to impeach the man. You talk about trying to get other people on board, and I wonder what those whole conversations are, are like. When you grab somebody by the collar and say, you've got to get on board with this, What's the argument against that that they're making more often than not? Is it that there's not enough information yet? Is it about the politics of it? What's the, the most difficult part of the cell that you have to make? Well, I haven't been trying to do it this year. I've, I've annotated my resolution to put in at the appropriate time the next time he steps in the bucket, which will probably be in an hour, <laughs> but I uh, can't do it during August. Uh, but I will, at that point, try to seek out sponsors, but I've been waiting. And, and during the first, when I did it in the last Congress, people... It was a little early, I guess, for a lot of people, uh, and politically they, they weren't willing to do it. Uh, now people are getting on board because the Democrats are like 77, 80 percent in favor of impeachment. They're seeing it in their homes, and, and it's a lot of places where it's like Massachusetts. It's, it's stronger Democratic districts, African-American districts where <coughs> Trump is mm -hmm. uh, about as popular as, uh, I shouldn't, I'm not going to say that, but some in big trouble. <laughs> right there. Beth Fuich, to his point about August, help us understand the importance of this month, these six weeks that lawmakers have before they have to be back on, on Capitol Hill. How important are the conversations that Congressman Cohen and others can be having with, with their constituents? Well, in, in many summers past, pr pretty much every summer since probably the Obama administration began, we have been covering members of Congress going home to their districts to town hall meetings, and of course, famously, the, under President Obama, the members of Congress heard a huge earful from their constituents about the Affordable Care Act that first year when, when that was being uh, considered. And of course, it, they all came back being quite uh, upset and, and alarmed about the reaction that they were getting. So we're, we're going to be sending people out to their districts this August, to particularly to these purple district um, first freshman Democrats, folks who, who won a seat from a Republican. And I, I actually, a question to you, Congressman. It's clear that, that Nancy Pelosi is very concerned about the re-election prospects of these folks and that an, impe an impeachment inquiry might imperil them. And I'm wondering, in your conversations with some of these folks, some of those 40 who picked up Republican seats, whether they worried about that the way she seems to imply is the, is the so, major Some of them point. are on that list of 100. There have mm -hmm. been certain people that were elected that are more difficult districts who I think shown a lot of uh, courage. Uh, I don't know that it's going to hurt them. I really think, and I haven't gone to you know, some pollster and said, tell me this, this is my gut from going around and just that 
people elected the Democratic House to put a check and balance on Donald Trump. That's why Trump district switched to Democrats. And if Democrats choose to impeach him and say he should be out, they're not going to vote against those people. They're going to go right on. That's why we put you in there. But, but, but just, uh, just respectfully, I mean, they also are, sent Democrats in to work on health care and work on infrastructure and other issues, kitchen table issues, I guess would be the argument. And that, that impeachment doesn't really meet We're that. We're doing all of that. Yeah. Nobody writes about it. Mitch McConnell kills it. He's the, he's the grim reaper. It's the graveyard. So if we pass things and we don't get the Senate and we don't get a president, it doesn't make any difference. We've got to win the presidency, which I think we will, but we also got to win the Senate, which is a real long shot. I'm not suggesting we impeach for politics. I'm saying we ought to do it because he deserves it. We need to put a scarlet letter on him. We need to do our duty. But if the Senate gets it and doesn't vote to impeach him, which they won't, then McSally and, and, and uh, Cory Gardner and Susan Collins, Elliot Williams, okay, but, but bye. I I have, it's beautiful having you here, though. Because I, no, because I want, no, no, because no, I want to ask, um, how do you respond to your colleagues, and I guess you know, maybe the speaker, but also your colleagues generally, who say that, look, there's an oversight process that we can follow, and we've got Hope Hicks and Annie Donaldson and Don McGahn coming in. We've got lawsuits teed up, and the way to do this is to build the evidence and so on, right? If you know that it's going to end up uh, landing like a lead balloon in the Senate and they're not going to vote for it, your colleagues seem to think that the oversight process is sufficient. How do you respond to them? Well, some of them do, and the oversight process, I think, will lead to impeachment, because I think what we're going to see in the 6E material uh, and getting McGahn out there... Is the grand jury... Right. Yeah, the grand jury testimony that was yeah. redacted. I mean, what is the grand jury testimony? That's the meat and potatoes. That's the lobster. That's the main course. And that's what they give to the grand jury to say, indict, not that you can't do a ham sandwich, but that's what <laughs> they do. And the fact is... That's why they hit it to interrupt you, though. The meat and potatoes. Help us understand what Jerry Nadler did this week by doing that. There are right. people who said by doing that, he's moving ahead with impeachment proceedings. But Do you agree with that? Is, we've been in an impeachment investigation, and the hearings we've had with, with McQuaid and all of them about obstruction and about um, we've had hearings on emoluments, and we've had hearings with John Dean and company, and, and then uh, the one we had with Mueller. These were all looking into what went on, and there's been so much that's gone on, and we've had race, and we've had all these different issues. And the, the, the courts are more likely to give us access to the 6 e material if it's a judicial uh, body. And if we're looking at impeachment, we are in essence. But you've already body. lost, you've already lost, when you start talking about 6 e and so on, I think the problem well, is that Republicans, they can fit their, their statement, uh, no obstruction, no collusion, full exoneration. They have it down to a sentence. I, the, part of the problem is that the Democrats are partly talking about impeachment, partly talking about oversight. It's just not clear where... Let, let me leave it there. We're going to come back here oh. in just a moment. Jared Nadler is just speaking on a, another net. We're going to play a bit of him uh, in just a second. We can talk more about yeah. 6E if you want to talk more about 6E. <laughs> Congressman, stay with us if you would. Much more coming up here on Up. Lawmakers reacting this morning to President Trump's ongoing attacks. And Congressman Elijah Cummings as well, calling them disgusting and racist. We'll play some of that when we get back as well. Welcome back to Up. I'm David Gura. And moments ago on ABC, Congressman Jerry Nadler reacted to President Trump's attacks on Congressman Elijah Cummings. Let's take a look uh, at what he had to say. The president is, as he usually is or often is, disgusting and racist. Uh, he makes these charges with no base at all. And they are designed to distract attention uh, from the very serious uh, allegations about his conduct uh, that, that came from the... Uh, Mueller from the from the uh, committee hearings this week. And the fact is, uh, the president accepted help from the Russians to attack our election. Uh, worked the, the, his campaign uh, uh, worked with the Russians. Uh, that is undisputed. Uh, and he uh, worked hard to uh, cover up those crimes. Uh, committed more crimes in, in working to cover them up, in lying, in urging other people to lie to investigators. Um, and so he's just trying to change the subject. Congressman Steve Cohen is still with us. I want to go to you and Sally Cohen on, on this point that Chairman Nadler just made there, that this is a distraction. Uh, and when you first drafted your article's impeachment, it was right after what happened in, in Charlottesville. So right. there was a moral, moral issue that you brought to bear in, in crafting those. Do you see these two things as, as discreet? Does one inform the other? Do you see the kind of distraction or separation that's being described there by your chairman? Well, I think he's, he's had no choice but to distract because he's the lawless president. He's individual one in New York, and he's the man that survived because of the OLC opinion in Washington. There's really two felonies, obstruction of justice on many counts, and there's the violation of campaign finance laws up here. I mean, this, he makes Richard Nixon look like a saint. 
It's ridiculous. Sally Cohen, I want you to weigh in on this. As we have this conversation about impeachment, how large does that moral issue loom as you look at these Democrats who are undecided trying to figure out whether or not to get on the bandwagon? Oh, I mean, massively, right? There's a, there's a sort of sense of you want to both for the righteousness, not only if you're partisan, but just the good of our country, what we hopefully at our best stand for, not to mention our laws uh, and our democracy. You, you want to support impeachment. And, you know, I'll be honest, I'm, I am like, I personally feel all over the place on this as a Democrat. 100% in, you know, as part of the 5,333 problems I have with this presidency, it includes his obstruction of justice and other lawless behavior. The Democratic strategist in me uh, feels more wary, having seen how impeachments can backfire on a party, worrying that we look like we've made a decision before we've uh, reached a conclusion. And the American in me also feels like, look, the truth is it is, I don't want to turn him into a martyr. I don't want to juice his base even further. And I would like to see this country, you know, come together and resolve and repudiate what he's done in an election. That does feel uh, so. Uh, and yet, there's no question the guy is deserving of but impeachment. Sally, what, so, what, uh, Sally yeah. what you said about past impeachments, Clinton got dirtied up a little bit. Gore didn't go to him in the campaign of 2000. Yeah. If he'd have gone to him, we'd have won. The Republicans won the presidency for eight years because of the little the impeachment they brought without much work and much effort. And they just <laughs> threw it out there. But that was totally different in that the Republicans controlled both the House and Senate at that time. So it actually could go through its logical conclusion and get to the Senate, have the Senate turn it down. And, and in, in this case, we've got a divided Congress. There's going to be no clear message out of the outcome of however this goes down. Well, was there a clear message then? The Senate turned it down. If we do it this time, if we do, the Senate's going to turn it down. So what's the difference in the clear, clear message? One of the messages, the guy has sex and he lies about it. Well, it committed, well, about well it. but also committed an act of obstruction of justice, yeah, too. I mean, we should be, you know, we should But it was all related to sex. Well, I, I understand the underlying lying conduct is, is different than national security conduct, but it's still obstruction of justice. Now, again, I, I never thought I'd be in the position of defending the House Republicans <laughs> in the 1990s, but again, it was obstruction. But I, you know, I still think, going back to um, Congressman Na Chairman Nadler's yeah. comments, how it was about racism and impeachment, the bigger thing to me is if this is about Donald Trump, mm -hmm. uh, he hasn't won over any new voters uh, over the course of these two plus years. And it, again, this gets back to Orlando, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Go. Pittsburgh and the swing places, is this what you want again? Well, the, go, go ahead, Sally. No, I do think there, there's yeah. this larger sort of underneath all of this, if we can stop talking about Trump's tweets for a second, there's sure. a, there is this sort of theory of the case of how Democratic uh, candidates win elections now and going forward. And one is about these three swing voters and whether they can be persuaded to change. I swear there's only three left. <laughs> and the it's other right. is, and, the, and I'm now arguing against myself before, I think, but the other is, is that you actually, that the nature of political politics, or partisan politics has changed. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump evidenced that. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about the majority of Republican voters anymore. Right. He cares about his base. And that Democrats going forward, actually, the theory of the case of how you win is you mobilize, energize, and turn out. Yep communities of color and progressive whites and that's and, and in this case it does not hurt you politically and perhaps helps you politically but i i don't want to make i have to be honest i think it is immoral not to mention uh problematic in a whole bunch of ways to make decisions based on like three swing uh, voters, white potential. swing voters right. uh you know right. in Wherever. Wherever. No, we're gonna, I don't know where those three are. We're going to leave me. it there just because of time. The gentleman from Tennessee's ninth congressional. By the way, you read the I'm effed quotation, I think, with more gusto than Hakeem Jeffries. You both read it during the hearing. I'm going to give Did you we? the prize for the best, I, I, best dramatic reading of that. I, I got criticized some on Twitter for not having used, used the, the actual word. The F bomb on television. I could have gone now in. Now's your chance. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Up next. Up chance. next. On up. Uh, 15 days of fury on the streets of San Juan. How the political crisis in Puerto Rico came to a head to save ourselves from the FCC. Thank <laughs> you.